What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here, and in today's video, we're going to be looking not at Cursor, but we're going to be looking at Claude Dev, alright? Everyone's been talking about Cursor, and I've seen some people still, you know, wanting to talk about Claude Dev, Continue Dev, all these other extensions, and I think Claude Dev is great, it got some new updates recently, so we're going to go over those and show you can, how you can actually use it with OpenAI's new O1 and O1 Mini models. Let's dive right into it. Right, guys so if you're not familiar with claude dev i've done videos on it before autonomous coding agent writing your ide capable of creating files executing commands and more with per, uh with your permission every step of the way so this was actually uh one of my favorite and still is one of my favorite vs code extensions for ai coding um so essentially replaces like you know um uh github copilot and you know i've done videos on continue dev claude engineer and I'd say, to be honest, Claude Dev, Continue Dev are, are my top favorite besides Cursor, okay? So uh, I'll leave the link to the GitHub in the description down below. Here's a link to the uh, Visual Studio Code extension page. Now, I will say this. Me personally, as of now, at this moment, you know, I see some people that still are like, okay, I like Claude Dev or Continue Dev or Claude Engineer, and that's great. But the, my thought process, and you don't have to do this, but uh, I, can, VS Code is just VS Code. Cursor is Cursor, all right? So it's literally a fork of VS Code. So there's really nothing at, that I know of. Maybe if I'm wrong, let me know. I don't know of anything that VS Code can do that Cursor can't, right? So even if you just want to use Cursor for free and not pay 20 bucks, which is fine, with, for the 20 bucks, you get access to the Composer and Yes, or the cursor credits, which is useful. I, I'm willing to pay the 20 bucks, but either way, regardless, you can use it for free and just use VS Code and still have Claude Dev and Continue Dev or whatever else you're using. And you can see which one is your favorite, right? So that's what I'll be showing you in today. I'm still going to be using cursor with Claude Dev. Now that out of the way, you may be wondering, okay, well, there is O1 limitations right now, and that is true. So if you're using um for one if you're using cursor like i mentioned in yesterday's video uh you they give you um access to to use it through their for their premium credits i believe so you can use that but for claude dev spe specifically they just introduced um uh you know integration or functionality with o1 all these different ai models or different tools are trying to update to allow o1 so um if you want to use o1 with Claude engine or Claude Dev, you can use it through Open Router. I mentioned this in yesterday's video. Open Router right here. If you're not familiar, it basically allows you to connect with pretty much any LLM. And uh, yeah, so let's go over a few of these Claude Dev updates. So this gentleman Sa Sayud, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing uh, your name wrong, but here's his Twitter handle. This is the uh, founder or developer behind uh, Claude Dev, and he's saying exciting new updates. You can now monitor your workspace for linter compiling and build issues as he works this uh lets him automatically fix problems like missing imports type errors and more all on his own so actually like the, the reason one of the reasons claude dev was one of my favorites is because this extension it it does a lot of really cool things um and i believe it even may do certain things that well, it does do certain things that cursor doesn't even do itself so i mean i think cursor could even take some notes from claude dev but uh here's his twitter and you can see he's posted a lot of different updates lately september 5th claude devs changes now appear in your files timeline allowing you to easily view diffs of past edits this is especially helpful if you want to revert to a previous version no need for get everything is tracked by vs code's local history me personally i still like using git and then Claude Dev can now run commands right in your terminal. So this is something that, as of now, um, I don't believe Cursor can do. And plus, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You copy and paste, but still. Uh, plus a new proceed with while running button to let him continue working as commands run, i.e. letting him react to server errors as he edits files. And that's pretty much it there. All right, so now I'm in my cursor uh, IDE, and we'll go over a couple more things with Claude Dev. If you haven't seen Claude Dev, 
in action before that's okay we'll go over the basics for you but one few a uh, few cool things with claude dev that even something that cursor doesn't have at the moment but one thing i know they probably won't do i'm assuming because everyone's been asking for it for a while and they've yet to do it i don't think i guess i think you, there may be workarounds but anyways having olama support a lot of you i know like your local models and i don't blame you like especially for certain tasks or certain things auto completes always nice you know maybe using gemini flash 1.5 because it's free whatever the case may be and by the way you can use that with google gemini here you could uh enter your api key and leverage 1.5 flash um but yeah you also have olama support here so you can connect connect olama for local models you have open ai of course aws bedrock Google Gemini, Anthropic, Open Router. So if you're going to use O1, which we'll show you in today's video, you can either do it through OpenAI, enter your API key here, select O1 Preview or O1 Mini, and then you're good to go. Like I said before, though, um, if you don't know, there is limitations on the OpenAI. You need to have Tier 5 for your API key. Um, so if you don't have that, you can actually just use Open Router here. You would just put your Open Router API key and then you can select o1 mini or o1 preview here okay also too with uh claude dev it actually support you can see which supports images what and what supports prompt caching so with claude sonnet 3.5 you can it supports prompt caching which can save you credits and give you better output and all that good stuff now another thing i really like about claude dev is i'm just going to move my head over here since the chat is here um i really like how it shows the, this information right here like such as max tokens input price cash rights rights price uh cash reads price which is specific for prompt caching of course output price all right so basically how it shows this and you'll see in the chat once we get there it shows how much you're using per your generations which is a really nice feature that something like cursor doesn't have even continue dev as at least since they updated it recently they don't have it so this is something like uh that i really liked about uh claude dev it it kind of has some cool features that a lot of these other tools don't have okay and you can even uh, of course input a custom instruction right here and you can enable this if you want so these instructions so allow read only operations so when enabled claude will automatically read files and view directories without requiring you to click the allow button so i'm not going to do that myself but uh this actually is pretty good because it can save you some credits um but you could do either one to be honest i'm not going to do that right now too just because if you are going to use um open ai's 01 01 mini the price is pretty uh substantial compared to something even like claude sonnet right so uh, they also have thanks to claude sonnet 3.5's agentic capabilities i can handle complex software development tasks step by step with tools that let me create and edit files explore complex projects and execute terminal commands after you grant commission i can assist you in ways that go beyond simple code completion or tech support okay so if you are using um the o1 model i believe it doesn't support custom instructions and obviously it doesn't support image uploads at the moment so we're going to start off by using o1 preview to do an overview of the project and then we're going to maybe use o1 mini to actually do the building out the files per se um, or maybe we'll just use one or the other it doesn't really matter the reason i suggest probably switching to o1 mini for certain things is just because of the cost factor um also speed too you know o1 it's going to take a lot of time in terms of doing using o1 in the these new models on a day-to-day -day basis for everything i don't think it's really that feasible uh for the dev experience that's just my opinion but maybe maybe i don't know maybe it's going to improve or maybe you guys have a different experience or opinion let me know in the comments down below okay so here's my prompt i want to build out an html jss or js uh, and CSS website for my digital marketing company that sells SEO services. We leverage AI to help service-based businesses rank number one in search engines. Please build me a very professional and modern website with all the important components and dummy images, testimonials, logo, header section, feature section, footer, and anything else you think could be useful for this in-depth project. Let's go ahead and send this. Okay, so it took a while, just obviously because it's 01, but here we got our tokens that it's going to use, our 
API cost. So we're see the tokens in and tokens out. I really like that feature. Okay. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. So you guys can see we got our accept or reject or save button here, um, which we're going to use in just a second. And we can see our API cost. So we're using about 50 cents per this one thing, right? So, I mean, definitely more expensive than something like Claude uh, Sonnet. But here we have our API request to create this professional website. We're going to create the header section, hero section, feature section, testimonial section, footer, dummy images. I will create an index, 8.html, CSS, uh, style CSS, and script JS, and organize them in a project directory called SEO website. So it's going to ask us to create the first file. We're going to say save. Now, like I, like I said before, you can set this up so it's automatically going to create these files. Cursor, uh, I believe, will do this, but I think you can also toggle that probably on or off. Um, I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why I, re I did really, I still do, still do uh, really like Claude Dev um, in terms of like comparison to all the other Chrome ex or the VS Code extensions is because it uh the dev experience is just really nice like it, it can create files that's what i like continue dev and i haven't checked it recently with i know they had some updates so i could be wrong if i am let me know in the comments down below but um they you they can't create files and like do this sort of thing that claude dev can I, and it can't run commands in the terminal to my knowledge and i like how it goes like task complete boom now, wow, so Claude Dev wants to execute this command to run everything. So I'm just gonna run the command and you can run it in the terminal. Okay, so I'm getting this error here, shell integration unavailable. Don't even fully know exactly what it means, but it did actually run the shell command. So um, yeah, it did run it by itself, no problem. Now here's the actual website. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, it's very basic. Definitely not top tier level by any means, but you it, it is a starting point. You could definitely obviously improve upon this and make this look a lot better. Didn't do the images, which even yesterday in my video. Okay, so and this this is the headline is not re legible just because it's white on white text, right? So a lot of things you could fix with this, but you get the gist of Claude Dev. Um, I would go ahead and start improving upon this. Now I have gotten a lot of people wondering, and I did a video yesterday testing Claude Dev or Claude Sonnet versus O1, the new O1 models. And some people are like, oh, O1 is like, you know, way better than Sonnet or, or just better in general than any other coding model. And I'm not, I can't fully like say yes or no in certain things. I, I, it hasn't been long enough for me personally testing these to really see. But one thing I will say is on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm, I tend to still lean more to Claude Sonnet 3.5 just because it's way faster. Like I can't be waiting around a simple prompt of output of code when Claude Sonic can do it much much faster and most of the time I can solve all the problems I need to with Claude Sonic. I mean the only time like I said before I've ever really had issues with these models is when it comes to some stupid little styling or something that's so simple that you could just probably do yourself or something that's like like just easy but it just will keep screwing up so that's what I've seen with these models it can do pretty complex things but then when you ask it to do a simple thing, maybe with styling or whatnot, that's when it tends to, for some reason, just keep on making the dumb mistakes, hallucinate, etc. So other than that, uh, you know, now that O1's out, we may see uh, Opus 3.5 come out very soon. So I would probably guess that that would, there's a good shot it could beat the O1 models, judging that, you know, I haven't, I personally haven't seen such a substantial improvement with the o1 but i also haven't fully tested it on some very difficult coding problems i know some people have been and they've been seeing some really good results with o1 but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below between about the o1 model as well as claude dev do you still prefer claude dev over cursor or are you just fully cursor like you're not even going to touch anything else i think the new claude dev updates are really useful and i personally believe that I don't know if there's any reason to use VS Code at the moment. I, I know everyone's kind of switching over to Cursor, and I'm going to stick at Cursor just because there's nothing that VS Code that I know of offers me other than uh, what Cursor does. I love Cursor too. So other than that, guys, hope you got some value from this video. If you're new here, we upload videos every single day on AI, AI coding, business, marketing, sales, a bunch of different topics. If you want me to cover a specific tool or do a video on a specific topic, let me know down below. I know some of you have been letting me know and I have a lot of different ideas in the pipeline. So 
may there is a good shot i may get to some of your ideas other than that guys we're almost at 6k subscribers thank you for the recent 5k subscribers not too long ago i think it was like last week so we're growing pretty quickly i really appreciate the support guys and i'm it makes me uh, more motivated to continue to put out higher quality content higher quality videos so uh yeah once we really start picking up i'm gonna really start drop i'm still gonna drop some really good stuff but uh you know i got some really good stuff in the pipeline i want to start working on even some more valuable videos and get you guys up to speed with uh, some cool things i've been working on so other than that i will see you in the tomorrow's video guys keep hustling keep grinding and of course guys accelerate your stride take care